Hi, welcome back to Jam Club. Uh, it's that time again. Um, hope you've had a good week and it's great to be with you again this week. We're going to kick off with a song. Um, it's the one that we did last week from last year's Holiday Club with the action. So clear a bit of space, up you get on your feet and let's sing and dance to uh, Never Far Away. or take a photo and then write around it um, various things to remind you that God knows everything about you. Well, uh, Evelyn did just that and she sent one in for us. Here it is. So she's told us um, about her things that she's good at, her fears and her worries, the things that she needs help with and her hopes and her dreams. And this is really, it's a great picture, Evelyn, and we hope 
that drawing this helped you to talk to God about all of these things and reminded you that he knows you and knows everything about you. Um, I uh, hope that some other people got to do that as well. Uh, don't forget, you can send in your pictures and you too can have your picture shown uh, and get a special mention on Jam Club. So we've been hearing the story of Daniel from the Bible and hearing about a king called Nebuchadnezzar. Well, we've moved on a bit. Uh, Daniel's still there, but King Nebuchadnezzar isn't. Um, but just to fill in a little bit of a gap, um, a couple of times in Nebuchadnezzar's life as he got older, he did some things that weren't great and that kind of showed that um, he was getting a bit proud and forgetting about God. Because do you remember, he realised that God knew everything uh, when Daniel showed him what his dream meant. Well, Nebuchadnezzar didn't remember that. Uh, and so a couple of things happened that where God had to remind him uh, that God was the greatest and not Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, but we've moved on a bit and now we come to a king called Belshazzar. So we're going to pick up on that story in a minute. But before we do that, I thought it'd be good to sing again. Uh, it's the song that I've uh, we've now done uh, certainly a couple of times, I think. Um, stand strong. Again, it's got actions. Uh, so if you stand up and clear a bit of space um, and then you can dance around with the kids on the video. Reminds us this song um, to be careful what we do because we take God with us wherever we go and we should stand strong for God no matter what others are doing around us, no matter what others say. We can stand strong for God in our faith. enjoyed that. Uh, so story time now, time for a true story from the Bible. Uh, so get yourselves comfortable, snuggle up somewhere uh, and we'll find out what happens to Daniel. He's a lot older in this story, a lot of years have passed uh, and he's maybe not in quite as good a position as he was the last time we saw him. Uh, but you get yourselves comfortable and I'll tell you the next story in the book of Daniel. King Belshazzar gave a huge party for a thousand guests. He had an idea. He ordered his servants to bring the gold and silver cups that King Nebuchadnezzar had brought from the temple in Jerusalem all those years ago. 
King Belshazzar wanted his royal guest to drink from those cups. Those cups have been used in the worship of God. They weren't meant to be used for parties, but if that wasn't bad enough, they began to use them to praise the statues that they worshipped as God. Statues of gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood and stone. How do you think God felt about that? Suddenly, a person's hand appeared. Not attached to an arm or a body, just a hand. And the fingers wrote words on the wall. King Belshazzar was terrified. His face turned white and his legs gave way underneath him. He called for all his wise men. I will give a reward to anyone who can read this writing and explain it. I will give him clothes fit for a king, a gold chain round his neck, and I will make him the third highest ruler in the kingdom. But tell me what this says and tell me what it means. So the king's wise men came in. But they couldn't tell the king what it meant. King Belshazzar became even more afraid. His royal guests were really confused. They must have been clamouring and chattering amongst themselves and the king's mother heard it. She came into the banquet room to find out what was going on. When she found out what had happened, she said, my king, don't be afraid. Don't let your face be white with fear. There is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the gods in him. In the days of Nebuchadnezzar, this man showed understanding, knowledge and wisdom. King Nebuchadnezzar put him in charge of all the wise men. The man I'm talking about is named Daniel. The king gave him the name Belteshazzar. He was very clever had knowledge and understanding and could explain dreams and secrets. He could answer really hard problems. Call for Daniel. He will tell you what the writing on the wall says and what it means. So they brought Daniel to the king. The king said to him, are you one of the captives Nebuchadnezzar brought from Judah? I have heard that the spirit of the gods is in you, that you're clever and have knowledge and understanding. None of my wise men can explain to me what this writing on the wall says or what it means. I've heard that you are able to explain. If you can, I will give you clothes fit for a king, a gold chain round your neck, and you will become the third highest ruler in the kingdom. I don't think Daniel was very impressed with King Belteshazzar. You can keep your gifts for yourself or give them to someone else. But I will read the writing on the wall for you, and I will explain to you what it means. Nebuchadnezzar was a great, important and powerful king. And God made him very important. Everyone was afraid of Nebuchadnezzar. But Nebuchadnezzar became proud and stubborn. And so he was taken off his royal throne. God needed to teach him a lesson. That the Most High God rules over the kingdoms of men and sets anyone he wants over those kingdoms. Belshazzar, you knew these things, you knew these stories, but still you haven't been sorry for what you've done. You've turned against the Lord of Heaven. 
you ordered these cups from the temple of the Lord to be brought to you so you could drink wine from them and praise statues as gods, statues of silver and gold, bronze, iron, wood and stone. You cannot see or hear or understand anything. But you did not honour the God who has power over your life and everything you do. So God sent the hand that wrote on the wall. And this is what it says. Many, many, tackle, parson. This is what these words mean. God has counted the days until your kingdom will end. You have been weighed on the scales and found not good enough. And your kingdom is being divided. It will be given to the empire of the Medes and the Persians. It might not have been the message Belshazzar wanted to hear, but still, even if Daniel didn't want it, he gave him the clothes fit for a king, put a gold chain round his neck, and Daniel was announced to be the third highest ruler in the kingdom. That very same night, Belshazzar, king of the Babylonian people, was killed. A man named Darius the Mede became the new king. The message from God to Belshazzar was quite a stern one, wasn't it? There was a picture there of some scales. Now they might not be the kind of scales, kitchen scales that you're used to having at home. Yours are more likely to be electronic scales. Uh, if I've got a set here, if you can just see behind me, these are like old fashioned scales. And the idea is that you have to try and get them to perfectly balance. So there's lots of different size weights here and you would put a weight on one side which makes it go down and then you put something on the other side to try and get it to balance but it doesn't does it because i haven't got another weight like that but that's what you're trying to do and it was the picture that god used in his message to belshazzar that god's standard is this. And no matter how hard we try, we can't reach it. We're not good enough. We can't make those scales balance. That was his message to Belshazzar. But do you know what? It's actually his message to all of us. There was a man called Paul who wrote some letters to people, um, uh, to churches. When people have become Christians, he wrote letters to them to try and help them understand more about God and about Jesus. And he wrote this in one of his letters. All people have sinned and are not good enough for God's glory. He's saying all people have done things that they shouldn't have done and they fall short of God's standards because God is perfect. And none of us are, even those of us, if there's any of you who are really, really good and you're good most of the time, we're not perfect. All people have sinned and aren't good enough for God. So that's the bad news, but here's the good news. Paul goes on to say, but people are made right with God by his grace, which is a free gift. People are made right with God by being made free from sin through Jesus. God gave Jesus as a way to forgive sin 
through faith. Grace is when we get something that we don't deserve. So God says, even though you're not good enough, because I love you, I'm going to make a way for you to be good enough without you having to try any harder. So he said, I'm going to give you Jesus. I'm going to give you my son. And when Jesus died on the cross, Jesus took all our wrong things that we think and we do and we say and the times we turn against God and want to go our own way. Jesus took all of that on himself and he was punished by God as if he'd done it. And because of that, we can now be friends with God. It's like Jesus has taken all the bad stuff from inside our minds and the things that we do that we shouldn't and given us all his goodness so that when God looks at us, he sees the goodness of Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? That is the really good news of the Bible. So now with our scales, it's as if God's standards are on one side and he puts Jesus on the other and they balance perfectly. And we can be friends with God. Nikki's going to help us think about that a little bit more in the craft that she's chosen uh, for us to do. So I'm going to hand over to Nikki. Hi, Jam Club. So I've been thinking about the Bible story for this week and all the things that Angeline's told us about. And I was thinking about the craft that we could do to go with that. Um, so I've come up with something and the things you're going to need are um, a piece of plain paper, doesn't matter what size it is, and a kitchen sponge, okay, um, it doesn't matter what sort, but a rectangle sponge and then I'm going to ask you to cut it in half so you've got two smaller rectangles um, and some paint if you've got it. Um, if you haven't, you can do this with um, felt tip pens as well, and I'll tell you about that later. But what we're going to do, don't worry grown-ups, we're not going to be encouraging anybody to write on any walls. Um, we're going to make our own wall to start with, um, because in the story, um, the king had the dream with the writing on the wall, and Daniel came to tell him what it meant. So we're going to start off by making a wall. So um, what I'll do is I'll just tilt the camera slightly so you can see what I've got here. I've got some newspaper on my table here. Just move my Bible out of the way so it doesn't get painty. Um, and you're not going to be able to see my face very well. I'm here. <laughs> and I've got my two kitchen sponges cut in half. Can you see? And I've got two different colours of paint, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip the sponge in the paint, like that, okay? And I'm going to make like a brick wall pattern just by pressing it down. And that's why you need your newspaper or something to cover up your table underneath because you go a bit over the edges sometimes. And it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be these colours, it's just the colours that I had available at the time um, but you can use whatever colours you like and you just go along and you make a pattern that looks like a brick wall there we go just put my last few bricks on whoops nearly went off my newspaper then end up with a painty table okay And then I'll lift it up so hopefully you can see. Move my paint out of the way. Oops. But I've got what looks like a brick wall. You see that there. Now, that's all well and good. Why do you want a picture of a brick wall? Well, Angeline was telling us, just so you can 
move the camera again. Angeline was telling us that um, one of the words on the wall um, meant, Daniel told the king, but it meant that um, he wasn't good enough. Um, and that got me thinking um, that none of us are perfect and um, might feel like we're not good enough and we mess stuff up and we get things wrong. Um, and that made me feel a bit sad. But then, um, as Angeline's told us, that's why Jesus came. And so um, once your wall is dry, I'm going to show you a little something special. I'm going to put my wet one out of the way. But here's one that I made earlier, okay, in the same colours that's now dry. Once your wall is dry, I'm going to reveal to you a little secret that I didn't show you when we first started making the wall. Because there's something special about this pit, this wall. Now because the things we do, um, the bad things that we do, or the things that um, make God feel sad, um, you know, those unkind words we might say, or um, if we do something a bit naughty, or if we um, think something horrible about somebody else, or even if we just don't do the things that we should do, they sort of put a wall in between us and God. And that's what happened. And that's why God sent Jesus. Because Jesus, when he died on the cross, he took on everything all those bad things that anyone had ever done and anyone would ever do. And he died for us so that we could be forgiven and that we could have um, access to God. And so what I did was, I'm just going to show you, I don't know if you can see, was I hid a cross in the wall show you, I'm going to take that off, that Jesus dying made space in the wall so that we could get through, that we could get through to God and we could be friends with God again, so the wall wasn't blocking us anymore, it was almost like he made a window or a doorway in the wall, and um, I hid the cross on there for you, so that's what it looked like before with the cross on, okay? And then you peel it off and you can see that because of Jesus, there isn't a wall there anymore. There's a space that we can get through, even though sometimes we still do all the bad stuff because Jesus died for us um, and our sins are forgiven. If we just go to God and say, I'm really sorry, then we can get through and we can still be friends with God. So that's what that picture is about this week. I did another one to show you as well. I'll just put that back on there. Um, what I did, I'll show you, I'll show you first of all how I did the um cross. I literally just cut out a paper cross, okay, and I got some bits of tape curled up. Just show you, I'll get that off on my tape. And I just rolled them over like that and stuck it on my cross there and then stuck my cross down on the paper like that. Can you just see it? I'm trying to hold it so you can see it. And then with that stuck down, let's move the camera again down, I got my painty sponges and I sponged my brick wall over the top of it okay so you can see that when it lifts off you've got the shape of the cross underneath and that reminds you that that wall isn't there that we can be friends with God again even though we're not perfect and we don't meet God's standards all the time okay now the other way of doing this is if you have a grown-up in the house that has some of this this is masking tape and you use it sometimes when you're doing painting and decorating in the house 
okay you could stick down the masking tape onto the paper in the shape of a cross now this is another one that I did earlier and this one's dry now so I can peel it away just like that and there's the cross section there and then we'll do the long bit here there we go and then you get the cross shape and you just throw your bits of tape away there okay so those are both a reminder that even though we still sometimes build a wall between us and God because we do silly things, we get things wrong, we're not perfect, we're only human um, and sometimes we mess things up. But because of Jesus and because of what he did for us, there's still a way to be friends with God and that's amazing. I'll see you all next time, Jam Club. Bye. Oh dear, Jam Club, Nikki's getting forgetful. I did say that I would show you how to do it if you didn't have paint at home, um, how to do it with your um, felt-tip pens or crayons. And then I forgot. But it's exactly the same um, as uh, you would have done with the paint. You just put your cross down on the paper just there okay and you just hold it down loosely with some tape and then you draw sort of brick shapes over the top of it and you can color them in you could make it brick colors you could make them rainbow bricks it could be any color you like whatever you've got um, and then you color it in and then when you lift your cross off you can see it's exactly the same you've got the cross shape underneath and that's how you do it with felt tip pens or crayons if you haven't got any paint. Bye! So it was very clever how Nikki did that, making the cross appear in the walls. I hope you enjoy making those yourself. And as you do it, you can remember what Jesus has done for us is making it possible for us to be friends with God. There's a beautiful song that we sang at Holiday Club last year called God Forgave, which says God didn't have to give us Jesus. He didn't have to do this, but he did it because he loves us. And no matter, once we've put our trust in Jesus, no matter how many times we fail or how badly we fail, we know we can always turn back to God and say sorry, and he'll forgive us because Jesus has washed the sin all the way as if we didn't do it. So you might want to use this song um, just to help you think a little bit more about the things that Jesus has done for you. You're watching Life Three Kids.
watching Live Tree Kids. Check out some of our other videos right there, and don't forget to subscribe. I've been talking a little bit about Holiday Club, and I said the other week that there was some exciting news for you. Well, it's time to tell you now. Unfortunately, because of the situation that's going on in our country and in the world at the moment, we can't run Holiday Club like we normally run it, but we're going to run it online instead. It's going to be from the 22nd to the 26th of July. That's Wednesday the 22nd to Sunday the 26th of July. And you will have to register, you'll have to sign up because we're going to send out a big pack of lots of craft materials. So you know normally at Holiday Club we make things in our pods. Well, we're going to be making stuff but you'll need to have all the materials at home. So we're going to send all that out to you. We're going to be learning a Bible verse like we normally do. So there'll be things in the pack uh, to help you do that. We'll be singing songs. So we'll be getting people up to do the videos of people doing the actions. There'll be all sorts of things happening. Um, it's going to be great. So whilst it's not what we normally do, uh, we hope that you'll really, really enjoy it. Um, but yeah, you need to register so we can get the stuff out to you that you need. Um, and then it's going to be online, at normal holiday club time uh, from 10 till 12 on Wednesday 22nd to Sunday the 26th. Uh, so next week I will make sure that I, uh, I'll get the details for you uh, and we'll get that out to you so that you can register and book so that you don't miss out and if you've got friends who live in other places because it's online uh, friends or relatives they can book in just let us know and uh, get send them the link and they can book in as well you'll be able to book in online but i'll tell you more about how to do that next week so um if you been before we're going to do our best to make holiday club as exciting as possible um, with all sorts of familiar faces um, um, we'll see what we can do and then we'll do a special celebration on the Sunday like we normally do so we'll need you to send in lots of photos of things that you've been doing and um, uh, yeah but we'll tell you more about it um, so running with the heroes it's called 22nd to the 26th of July and I'll give you more details next week so that's it for this week um, now, I will warn you, next week is the last Jam Club online before the summer. Uh, normally, we would finish Jam Club about the end of June, beginning of July, uh, just to give ourselves a little break and then to give us time to prepare for Holiday Club. So because we're doing the Holiday Club online, there's quite a lot to get ready for that. So we are going to finish Jam Club um, online next Thursday. Uh, we'll be back in some form in September. That seems a long time off, so we don't quite know what it'll look like, but we will be back to do something for you in September. Um, so um, make sure you don't miss next week because it's the final story in the book of uh, Daniel that we're going to do, and it's the final club before the summer. But um, even though Jan Club's finishing, we're still going to be running our church services every Sunday, so you'll be very welcome to come and join us for that. I always put the details on the pack and at the end of the video. Um, so you're very welcome. If you're missing us and you just want to hear more about the Bible and more about Jesus, then uh, come along and join in our church services on Sunday mornings. Uh, so for now, enjoy doing the things in the pack. There's a couple of games. Uh, in there and uh, the story so you can read it for yourself and then we'll see you uh, next week thanks again to Evelyn for sending her picture and if you want to have your picture appearing in our video then get in touch and send it to us um, so look after yourselves this week be good stay safe uh, and keep trusting God we'll see you next week bye